What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and right now we are going to talk about Disgaea 7 and if you should get it. How different is it compared to Disgaea 6? What's it like? Does it play like an older Disgaea or is it still very similar to 6? Well I'm going to answer all of your questions right now. Hopefully. If I forget to cover anything in this video feel free to comment down below and I will reply to you with an answer. So let's jump into it shall we? So we're just going to swap over to the game screen real quick right now. Now, as you can see, we are still playing the Japanese version of the demo. The full game is still not out in Japan yet. That is going to be in the next few days. And of course, we still don't really know anything for the actual uh, English release yet. So we still have no news for that. However, let's talk about a few things. Firstly, it is still 3D. Okay, the skill animations are still in 3D. However, they are much smoother and clearer looking than Disguise 6. So if you are having issues with the way Disguise 6 looked, you'll be pleased to know that that is now different. Okay, they are, well, slightly different. So they are much more improved on that. And I will, uh, obviously I'll have a bunch of more Disguise 7 videos. So you can check them out if you want to see different skills and so on and so forth. But they are much smoother. However, let's address some of the other bigger complaints shall we firstly auto battle now auto battle is in the game however it is entirely different to the way it was in disguise 6 firstly auto battle is not usable in the demo okay it is completely not usable in the demo not only that in order to use auto battle okay there are a few like requirements first and foremost firstly you are only allowed to use auto battle on stages that you have completed so right here i can use auto battle on any of these because i've already cleared them however if we look at stage two i've obviously not cleared the stage because that ends the demo basically i would not be able to use auto battle on that until i clear it manually so you can't you cannot use auto battle to clear stages for you that you've never done before we don't know how it is going to impact item world just yet whether you know you can use it or you can't use it we we don't know that yet however one of the things we do know okay is in order to use auto battle you are going to need a consumable item for this okay there are only two ways to get it as well firstly we can get it from a hospital reward so this is the gacha system which is basically replacing hospital rewards in disguise 7 you unlock this by using the um uh the dark assembly basically and once you go in you can basically get a bunch of rp which is reward points essentially this is just from general healing as you can see i have 175 million right now I got that just by basically killing off a couple of characters and, and healing them. And also, don't worry about the cost or, or anything like that. You will actually get more HL than you spend to heal, basically. It's like if you spend 100 million HL, you'll get a heck of a lot more uh, RP to then spend getting more items that you can then sell. Basically giving you an infinite loop. So this is actually a pretty good uh, HL farm as well. Now... The consumable, you aren't going to be able to see it right here because I have already unlocked it, okay? It was a one-time reward right here, so for the 3,000 RP. In order to get that one-time uh, that one -time reward, what you have to do is, you see on the right, there's the Royal Ring, which is a rare, uh, like just a normal rare item. And then below that, there are five items. Once we've got those five items, so if I just get like 100 spins on the gotcha right now, once we get those five items, we can then claim the unique item. I've already got the one-time rewards for these, so I unfortunately cannot show that off. But once you claim the item, you get it, and then it will change to another item, pretty much. One of the items is from this. However, it does only seem to be a one-time only thing, and you can't get it from, you know, any of the other gotcha rewards or, or anything like that, unfortunately. It is not in there. However, you can get like a bunch of innocence and also, you know, uh, point shop, uh, you know, like EXP, mana, stats and so on like that. Because yes, that will return to the game as well. That is back in Disguise 7, the, uh, the juice bar. However, it does seem to be much more refined just going off what we've seen so far in the demo. Obviously, the feature itself is not available. So this is only a preliminary look at the feature, but it is still there. 
So with regards to auto battle, the other way of getting this consumable item will come from skills. Okay. Now we don't have access to the skill uh, to the. Uh, no, it doesn't come from skills. It comes from quests. I got there in the end. Okay. Now we don't have access to that quest in the demo. So we don't we don't know what the requirement is going to be for that quest. Okay. However, what I can tell you is. Obviously, like other Disgaea games, quests themselves can be a bit annoying. And depending on how many you get rewarded from a quest, chances are you are not going to be uh, you are not going to be farming a huge amount of these. Unless you know you get like five or ten per quest, then it might be worth farming. But if you're only getting like one or two or something like that, then it might not really be that worthwhile of farming. There is one other thing in auto battle as well. So PvP is making a return in Disguise 7. This is also a feature we do not have access to in the demo. We have only seen this in trailers. But the way this is going to work is essentially it's going to be a little like the older versions of PvP, you know, from Disgaea 5 where you will you will create a team so if we just look at our dispatch unit right here it's essentially you create a team and you pre-program a demonic intelligence for that team okay and then you will put your team against another person's team and they will like both teams will just battle it out using the demonic intelligence there will be no user input or anything like that that we are aware just going from the trailer and press information that nis has released so straight off the bat, that is the two forms of auto battle. So it's nowhere near like Disguise 6. You are not going to be letting the gameplay itself or anything like that. If that was one of your big concerns, do not worry about that. Now, let's talk about something else that I know a lot of people have been worrying about. And that is number bloat. Now, me personally, I don't really have a problem with the way Disguise 6 did numbers, but I know a lot of people do. So if we actually take a look at some of my characters right now, the level cap is still 9,999. I do not think that is going to have a break level cap. There is no press material or anything like that with a level above 9,999. And some of the press material does have incredibly insane damage as well. So I do think 999 is the cap. So we're basically back to Disguise 5 and earlier titles with regards to the level cap also look at the stats okay now this this witch character has all classes mastered so if i just go to the uh, the character stats right now all of the other jobs are mastered you are still going to gain a stat boost from having the other jobs mastered okay and also what i should say is this character also has all of these question mark jobs mastered as well there is a glitch in the demo where if you just select the question marks it will actually select that class and you can still earn exp as normal and you can still master them as normal as well so this class right here has everything in here mastered and for those of you who are wondering there are 55 classes in the game but i do have all of these mastered not only that i reincarnated i do not have max reincarnation stats on this character However, I did level from level 1 all the way up to 9,999 using stat boosting uh, evil tees. So I used SP and I used intelligence. Okay. So right now, as you can see, I'm on 144 million and 9 million intelligence. That is not very high at all. Also, that is being boosted by my gear. Okay, so just looking at the stats right there, we can see attack, defense, resistance, hit, and speed are all around the 5 million mark. So we are not actually even going to gain 10 million in stats like Disgaea 5 from just mastering all of the classes. It seems that is going to cap out at around 5 million. So that's an educated guess, but again, that could be different in the full game. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think it will be though. Now, my intelligence is higher because I did use uh, boosting novelties. And, of course, my SP is higher as well because I boosted that a lot more. Just because I wanted to try out the uh, the witchy skill from Disguise 6, where you spend all of your SP to do a really, really big attack again. Unfortunately, this is not quite as good as it was in Disguise 6. It has been slightly nerfed. And we can't really get, you know, the, the insane damage that we had previously. Which also means you can't really use this as a HL farming method like previously either. Other than that, okay. 
I don't necessarily think stats are going to get ridiculously, ridiculously inflated from the juice bar either. Why? Well, even in Disgaea 6, where the stat caps were way higher than any other title, the juice bar itself was still capped at 500 million. Or was it 500 billion? It was one It was one of the two. It was one of the two. I can't quite remember off the top of my head what it was. But I don't think we're going to go all the way up again. I am, I am leaning more towards either a 99 million cap or a 999 million stat cap. I don't think we are going to go any higher than that in this game, but again, I, I could be wrong. Full game's not out yet, so that is just an educated guess for my part. What I can say, however, is gear is much more impactful once again. So we are basically back to, you know, like Disco Fire and, uh, and so on and so forth, where gear plays a big, big aspect in this. So if we look right here, this is a testament, okay? The testament only gives me 577 stats across the board. However, if we actually look at my character, I am gaining over 100,000 points. Why am I gaining that many stats when the base stats on the testament is so low? So there are a few reasons for this, okay? Firstly, obviously I have the matching bonus. So I do have the matching bonus right here. They're all the same rarity as well. So we are getting a matching bonus from this. But then it also comes across with one of the new features in Disguise 7, which is the property feature. Now, we don't know a huge amount about this feature just yet. All we know is what we've sort of glanced from the demo and what we've seen in trailers and press information, okay? Now, the properties are essentially a part of the item reincarnation. So in Disguise 7, we are going to be able to reincarnate characters and we are going to be able to reincarnate items as well. Item reincarnation will basically take an item and then it can turn it into another item, further increasing the stats and changing the properties. Now, right here, I only have, you know, like a couple of properties on these pieces of gear. I have some pieces that, you know, have like four properties on, two properties, one property, three properties, and so on and so forth. These properties can be a number of different things. So if we look right here on the testament, this one right here is ability 3%. Now, I'm not quite sure what ability 3% means. I don't know if that's like extra 3% to damage or if it's an extra 3% to my stats. I don't know, okay? I'm using Google Translate to play the demo, so I cannot be 100% sure on what that is. However, right here, okay, this one is an extra 25% EXP. So are statisticians going to be in the game or not? We don't know. If I go through all of my items, okay, on the innocents, like right here, I am only coming across stat innocence. I have not come across any innocent that is like, you know, a professional or um, a status innocent, like charmer, you know, uh, stuff like that. I've not come across statisticians, brokers, managers, nothing. So it seems all of those have now been replaced to properties. Now, the good news is you can get a ton of properties on items, okay? In some of the uh, press release information that we've seen so far, there are pro like there are items with item reincarnation where you've got like 10 plus properties on. And I don't know if we get to choose what properties go on or if they are random, but it seems like a lot of the innocents are now relegated to properties. And also we have new effects on properties as well. For example, lowering damage, increasing damage, increasing range, and so on and so forth. I've seen a whole bunch of different ones. But again, we are still early in the demo. So who knows what we can actually unlock later on. I do have a feeling some of them will be rather exclusive to item reincarnation. But we'll have to see on that front. And of course, with the innocents themselves, as, them, uh, as they are being only for stats now, it seems... That is actually kind of a good thing because it means we can power level equipment properly without really having to worry about the innocence on there. We can just load it up with, you know, attack innocence, defense innocence, HP innocence, doesn't matter. We can just load that up. We don't have to lose any slots for, you know, statisticians, brokers or anything like that. We can just combine that with properties, essentially. So that is, in my opinion, a nice change. Other than that, we can talk about two more things. Firstly... Class unlocks and skill unlocks, okay? So if we actually look at, let's look at the witch here. Now, 
The witch for me is obviously has quite a lot of skills. Why does it have so many skills? So firstly, this character started off as a cleric and then I did reincarnate to the witch afterwards. So a lot of these skills first are from the cleric. Now, a lot of these just come from leveling the cleric normally as a lot of them are buffs and white magic. However, if we look down here, I have two spear skills as well. And I didn't use a spear class. Weapon skills have returned and you acquire them via leveling weapons. Now, I have tested that uh, the level is the only important thing, okay? Weapon rank does not matter. Whether you have a sword rank C or a sword rank S, you will still unlock the sword skills at the same level. However, unfortunately, the demo has capped the level that we can acquire. We cannot go above level 19, okay? I've tried fighting in the Dark Assembly to try and boost that further, thinking maybe it was just enemy levels. I've tried using high-level thief boxes. We cannot get past level 19 in the demo. So we are limited in some of the skills that we can acquire. However, one of the good things, uh, in my opinion anyway, is not only will you earn skills from leveling your weapons and equipment, you will unlock classes. So in previous Desigaya titles, a lot of the classes were unlocked via leveling other characters. So once you got, say, a fighter and a thief to level 2 mastery, you would unlock a new class. I know that's, you know, like just made up, but that is the general premises of how it used to work. Now, however, in the demo, the quests are all revolving around weapon skills. So for example, to unlock the gunner class, we had to get the gun weapon level up to level five on any character. Doesn't matter what character, just any character, get it to level five and then you can turn in the quest. We have level five bow for the archer class. And there's also the uh, the monster head, which gives us another class as well. That was to unlock the neko matter. And then of course you can go to the uh, the class shop and you can just create it as normal and of course if we go down the list we don't have access to all the classes at the minute so i can't show every single class in the game but in my opinion it's not too bad one of the things i do want to show off though is look at the witch's aptitudes okay 80 hp 135 sp 80 attack 95 defense yeah and so on and so forth However, if we look at my witch right now, okay, we'll just look at my witch. Look at those aptitudes, 230 HP, 285 SP. How did I get them so high? It is not from reincarnation. And there is no character world in the demo. I don't know if there's going to be one in the full game or not. We'll have to wait and see. But there is no character world so far, and it's not from reincarnation. You will increase your aptitudes by leveling, okay? Okay. You will increase them by leveling up. Now, this character has hit max level twice. The Enrigi here hasn't hit max level at all, but as you can see, the aptitudes are a little weird. Whereas if you look at this character, this was just made at level 2128. The aptitudes are perfectly normal. Likewise, if I showed this character, the Necromata, which is level 7999, that was also made fresh at that level. As you can see, the aptitudes are still normal there as well. There's no gain. But then if we actually go to, let me just find the main character. If we look at, I believe her name is Perika, her aptitudes are slowly going up as well because she has been leveled. So aptitude leveling now is just based on your character level. I don't know if the 300 cap is still there. However, now it is going to be much easier to max out character aptitudes, which is great in my opinion. Maxing them out via character world was a bit of a slog in previous titles, and I'm glad to see the feature really returned properly. And of course, when you reincarnate as well, if I just show this off, when you reincarnate into any class as well, it is still essentially the same as, you know, previous disguise, where you can still increase your stats via reincarnation. However, I don't know what the cap is here. I'm going to assume it's going to be around 1,500 just because of where I am at currently. Maybe a little less, but we're probably going to have ways to increase that limit further just like in previous titles. But again, it's a nice other way of increasing stats in Disguise 6. And then obviously... Uh, we do have all of the Dark Assembly builds. One of the things I will say as well, however, is if I just find a character with some mana, there we go. So if we look here, okay, 
We don't need a character world now to boost character abilities, and we don't need to reincarnate like in Disgaea 6. So this Dark Assembly build right now is increasing the character's jump ability. So for example, if I pass this build, that would be an extra five jump, and I can do this three times or four times. I, I can't remember. I've only done it though. I've only like maxed a character at once. So I, I want to say it's three or four times, but it does obviously get exponentially more expensive. Then we have increased the movement, increased the counter rate, uh, increased the throw distance and so on and so forth. So there's no, going to be no reincarnating to boost a character or anything like that. It now just takes a little bit of mana in the dark assembly to increase the stats. Will there be a character world? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, there's a lot of NPCs, as you can see. Some of these are my created ones, but if you look at the symbols above the head, there's one there, there's one here. Um, there's a bunch up here, you know, like there's two here. Obviously, one of these is going to be the item world. That's probably going to be the item world right there. That's probably going to be the juice bar right there as well. And then... Quite obviously, we're going to have something here. The NPC just has not spawned yet. This one is probably going to be the PvP. That's what the symbol looks like to me anyway. And of course, we'll also unlock the Cheat Shop NPC as well, which will be like previous titles where it's not on the map until you actually unlock it. And then there's probably going to be a few more unlocks as well via the Dark Assembly as you progress through the game. So, thoughts and opinions on Disgaea 7 so far. Firstly, I do want to preface this and say I did actually enjoy Disgaea 6, okay? I enjoyed Disgaea 6. I did not mind the number bloat whatsoever. It didn't bother me at all. Um, I didn't care about the skill animations because I turned them off anyway. I played Disgaea for hundreds of hours, you know, like Disgaea 5, I put in hundreds of hours, four hundreds of hours, three hundreds of hours, six hundreds of hours. So one of the first things I do when I play a Disgaea game I go into the settings, I turn everything to the fastest, and I also turn all the skill animations off just to make my grinding as efficient as I possibly can, so I don't care about the skill animations. I am, however, happy that the level cap has returned to 9,999, and also that there is no shared EXP anymore. So once you are in a stage, you earn EXP the minute you kill a unit. It is not put into a pool and then shared across everyone on the field at the end of the mission. It is just given to the character that gets the kill, okay? I don't mind that. I prefer that. I do enjoy the way that that is. However, it is also incredibly easy to earn EXP for the juice bar. Well, I'll have a video coming out about that shortly anyway. But again, leveling up to maximum level via the juice bar does seem like it is going to be ridiculously, ridiculously easy, but we don't know what we can use that EXP for. There might be some other new features that we just don't know about yet that will make use of that, but we'll have to wait and see, unfortunately. Now, my opinions with this guy is seven, okay? I am actually looking forward to the game. I don't mind any of the features in Disguise 6, but I do think Disguise 7 has sort of sort of forgotten a lot of the stuff in Disguise 6 and is now more closer to Disguise 5 again. A lot of the a lot of the features in the game and the way the game plays is very very reminiscent of Disguise 5 and Disguise 4 and so on and so forth. Do I think it's going to be a good game? I, I like Disgaea, okay? I very rarely have anything negative to say about Disgaea. There are some things which, you know, we won't get into in this video. But I think this will actually be an incredibly, incredibly good game. Even though I can't understand Japanese, okay? I am literally having to use my phone with a Google Translate app that I can sort of point the camera at the screen and it'll just translate for me, okay? That is, that is how I am playing the demo. I don't understand Japanese at all, and I am still having fun, even though I am having to go through that extra process. I will say, I will, I will freely admit, it is not that fun when I'm trying to go through, uh, you know, 350 abilities, okay? It is, it is not that fun when I'm trying to go through that many abilities at all. <laughs> but... In my opinion, anyway, I, I do think Disguise 7 is going to be worth playing for sure, okay? I am having a ton of fun. I don't speak Japanese. And if I can have this much fun 
Like, my, my save right now is 55 hours on the demo, okay? If I can play a demo for 55 hours that I don't understand anything on and still enjoy it, I, I honestly think there is nothing to worry about with regards to this game. But again, that's just my opinion. That is my thoughts, okay? So I'm going to pass the question on to you guys. Are you going to get Disguise 7 or are you not going to get it? Like, I'm, I'm curious. If you are not going to get it, why? I want to know your thoughts. And obviously, you know, if you have any other questions with regards to the game, then ask away in the comments and I will answer them as quickly as I can. One thing I do want to say, though, is this is a new microphone I'm using right now. Could you guys let me know how the audio quality of this video is? Let me know, you know, any pros or any cons of this new uh, of this new mic and how the audio is in general. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on that just so I can, you know, improve the, uh, the quality even further in the next video if need be. And I can fix any bugs that might pop up with it. Because obviously now it's a mic, it's a mixer. It's not a simple plug and play mic that I was using previously. So there might be a little bit of an adjustment period there on the audio quality. I do apologize if that is the case. But though, everybody, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please be sure to smash that like button and drop a comment down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more content. As always, though, everybody, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.